365 is on the road here at NVIDIA GTC 2025 in San Jose, California. It has been an incredible event so far, and unsurprisingly, we're talking a lot about AI. Imagine that. I feel like this is all we've been talking about for the last two years, but it's, it's, it's great stuff. And one of the core themes that, it's interesting, I, I don't always say, hey, I told you so, but even 10 years ago, I said the cloud will be hybrid. And you know, guess what? Uh, hybrid AI is hybrid as well. And it makes sense. This is what enterprises want. They want workloads split between on-prem, cloud, and even the public cloud, because that just, completely makes sense. And I am in the IBM booth, but hey, I want to introduce here, uh, Hillary, it's great to see you. Good to see you again. Welcome to the 6.5. You and I haven't done a video together, but we've been on a lot of conference calls together. We have, we have. And video, so yep. it's great to actually yep. get, get out to and sit do this down. together. Yeah. That's what these shows bring, is the opportunity to get together, so it's no, great. No, no, totally. And uh, you can probably, everybody can hear the booth behind us. I was in your booth a couple of weeks ago at Mobile World Congress, literally playing ping pong uh, and showing the power of Watson X. Like, how can that be possible? Just tracking my ball. Uh, I lost to somebody who I didn't want to lose to. They gave me a full LLM readout on all the things I did well and all the things I didn't do so well. But I just thought it was cool. Couldn't fit into here, otherwise I might be playing yeah, that in ping pong. Yeah, so anyways, awesome. let's actually get down to talking through this. So AI is a journey, yep. as we've seen with everything with enterprises. You don't just start and stop and decide to do something that changes everything overnight. Um, and you know, we saw experiments, uh, we saw POCs, and now we're finally starting to think scale. And I think, my research firm thinks 2025 will be the era where it starts delivering ROI. But listen, you talk to a lot of clients, probably more than I, um, how, what are you experiencing? What are they experiencing through their AI journey? Yeah, I think everything that we're seeing is very aligned to what you just described. I think to maybe throw a few numbers behind it though, we periodically do these IBM Institute for Business Value, IBB studies that look at how is the C-suite feeling about adoption. And we've definitely seen a market uptick between 2023 data uh, that in some cases was in the 20 something percents about real confidence that it was about to be deployed now to the end of last year, the latest copy of the survey was well over 70 percent. I feel like the time is now. And I think your example is a great place to start this conversation, right? The sports you know, environment for understanding and analyzing and providing feedback, it's just the tip of the iceberg in what we're seeing. This is all industries, all businesses. In many cases, it starts with internal transformation opportunities around digital labor and yeah. contracts and all this other kind of stuff that no one wants to be doing anyway. And people then can do more you know, high value work because of that stuff. And similarly, then it extends all the way into enterprise and enterprise data sets and even out to the edge where most enterprises are interfacing with their customers. And it's powerful. We're seeing not only in our own experience and things like customer support, higher NPS, but our clients that are implementing solutions in those kind of areas are reporting the same thing. You know, much faster time to resolution, higher NPS, why not, right? Right. And I remember Arvin giving some really good early proof points. Yeah. Even on an HR chatbot, which I thought was incredible. Absolutely. This is one of the first CEOs to really go public uh, with this all. I thought it was really impressive. Yeah. Um, so, I'm in, a, I'm in tech. I've been doing tech for a long time. You have too. Like, we both know that, hey, you can't do enterprise generative AI, yeah. things like agents, by swiping a credit card and going to ChatGPT. It's just not that simple. Uh, so, what are some of the challenges? that your clients are having. Yeah. You know, I know we've moved on a little bit, but what's keeping them from scaling and just doing this? Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of focus and you see it in our release of the most recent Granite family. Just a couple weeks ago, we announced the Granite 3.2 model family, where not only with the core models, but the, you know, the reasoning capability, the multimodality, we are keeping the model sizes relatively small, relatively yes. compact. Our guardian model that helps you ensure the trust and the safety of the model is down to five billion parameters. 
um, 800 million active parameters and a mixture of expert kind of context. And so we really are trying to help our clients build based on open source AI that is at an affordable size in terms of the model. It still right. is accelerated in many cases by NVIDIA GPUs, but it's accelerated um, in order to get that you know fast response time and yeah. such. But you know, being able to create AI that then enables enterprise scale is I think one piece of it. But the other thing is data, data privacy, oh, data yes. policy, all that stuff. And so I like to say that AI needs to be not only a which AI, but sort of the how of the AI, which AI platform. And I think that's also a very active conversation that folks are having. And our approach together with Red Hat is you know, to leverage open source, but make the capabilities available across all different types of environments. And that spans even for us into the AI conversation being on-premises on systems like the mainframe. Um, because that's where there's a need to do in-transaction fraud detection or other things that AI capabilities can really help with. And so the AI conversation, I think, is pervasive, and we're trying to help people get past that barrier to get to the valuable data, the places they're going to have the highest ROI in their implementations, um, and cross that bridge between experimentation into production, because there's an ROI and a you know, return from it. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Red Hat because, again, I don't get it. I don't get all my prognostications are not all right. I like to think the important ones are, and you know, quite frankly, ten years ago I said, listen, the cloud is going to be hybrid, uh, and it is, and people want a consistent way to do things on prem. Um, sovereign cloud uh, and the public cloud and things even like enterprise SaaS. One of the biggest conversations that has come up with a challenge, not necessarily to the hybrid cloud and hybrid AI, is data and data management. Um, and it seemed easy from a, we knew this would be a challenge. I mean, I started school and probably you and it was garbage in, garbage out. It's a long time ago. Well, it seems to be amplified with generative AI and in particular agents. Uh, and unlike previous AI, we're mixing data. Hey, ERP and PLM uh, and CRM, and then it gets very complex. Uh, you gave a talk on Visa, with Visa, on some of their data management uh, challenges, and I was wondering if you could, can, can you talk through that on that use case for data management? Because it's literally my number one thing that, that we research now. Yeah, I mean, you know, Visa talked yesterday about kind of the context of their industry. They, like most of our enterprise clients, are the stewards of really sensitive information, right? So everything that they're doing as a company, how they do it, consumer information, the financial information, all that, everything that a company like that does is not only regulated, but sensitive, right? They want to be good stewards of that. So very much along the lines of the hybrid cloud conversation, uh, one of the things that they spoke about is that they made it decision to build out an AI environment on premises quite intentionally and in part for you know kind of data protection reasons and then the next step becomes how do you bring that AI conversation and generative AI creation and such into harmony with the rest of what you were doing from an analytics perspective and such and so for them that meant having a common data model and data management and so we have a great solution with them where they're using IBM spectrum scale storage to keep high utilization of their DGX, NVIDIA DGX based yes. cluster for training. So providing high throughput, uh, high bandwidth storage capabilities to really leverage the value of what they have from a compute perspective. But then also using our AFM technology in that product to help with the data management and consistency across their traditional analytics environment and their AI cluster. So I think it speaks to many of the themes that you were bringing up. So let's go to let's go to models. Yeah. Which I'm glad we didn't start there. Sometimes everybody wants to start there. I, I get it. Um, IBM was one of the first to say uh, multi-model is the way to go, and you know you have your own models. You support other models like Llama, but let me ask you this: What is your vision for models across the infrastructure 
that scale uh, with your clients across a multitude of platforms, including Z. Yeah, I mean, there was a statistic that last year, 66% of models that were released were open source. And we're definitely in that camp of open source and optionality fundamentally. What you mentioned as that strategy that yes, we are opening, so we are creating models, open sourcing them under an Apache 2.0 license. Um, but part of that is to enable customization. Another figure um, is that 1% or less of enterprise data is represented in those models off the shelf. Of, of course they're not having enterprise data in them, that's all behind firewalls. And so the process and the conversation I think is both about model optionality, not just our models, but those of other partners and open source capabilities. Um, the conversation is one also then customization of models to include enterprise data. For us that's where our, our RHEL AI, uh, Red Hat Enterprise yes. Linux AI capabilities around Instruct Lab for model realignment to include your data and knowledge and skills um, comes into play. And then, you know, from an overall perspective of governance, one of the things we announced at the conference here is the inclusion of NIMS-based capabilities as an option for how you deploy and what you use within WatsonX.data and our governance capability, WatsonX.governance. And so, again, from a governance perspective, we're very open. We understand people are going to have AI in different places, have different model choices, have customized models, and they're going to want a single platform for governing all of that. So I think platform is the common word that you will consistently you know, hear us Use and that means partnering with many different strategic vendors from a you know SaaS and data source perspective. It means partnering with different folks from a model perspective, and ultimately helping enterprises have a consistent view across that full landscape. Yeah, I mean, optionality is winning out the day. Which surprise, it's enterprises. Uh, one thing I really do appreciate your granite models is how efficient they are. How they're not trained on stuff that makes no sense to business. Okay, um, but I hope that continues well into the future. So, listen, we're at NVIDIA's big show here, and we haven't talked about NVIDIA yet. Um, so, what are you doing with NVIDIA that, let's say, differentiates you? Because yeah. a lot of people are partnering with NVIDIA here. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of what we're doing, and I think some of the difference in kind of our tone and conversation versus some of the rest of the show floor is we're very enterprise oriented. Our press release today, we talked about stuff across all facets of the IBM business, spanning from our software portfolio, the things I mentioned around Watson X and inclusion and NIMS based capabilities into our infrastructure with our content aware storage. Again, there's a there's a, a, a key problem in AI and its recency, right? Oftentimes AI isn't the best way to get information on what just happened in the stock market in the last hour. And enterprises need to be up to date, they need to be providing their employees the most up to date stuff. Integrating the ability to vectorize data as soon as the file hits the storage system enables you to have AI that's searchable and up to date, up to the minute. And so, you know, that kind of thing in our in our hardware portfolio, we, we announced as well in our cloud addition of the next generation of you know H200 GPUs into the cloud, and then consulting. And the consulting conversation again is very much about the enterprise. Many at the C-suite are saying they're not totally confident they have all the skills. And you know we've got 75,000 Gen AI certified practitioners ready to go and build these kind of things, like we as a company have been doing in our own internal transformation, right? So it's a very enterprise-focused conversation yeah. so for us. When you're thinking about um, like how to map, I'm not asking you to pre-announce anything, but what are some of the things that we should think about next? What can we expect next from? from either IBM or IBM and NVIDIA? Yeah, you know, I think you're going to continue to see us focusing, you know, in, in all aspects of our company and addressing this sort of platform conversation. We've been very consistent in that, you know, since the beginning um, and looking forward, you know, basing AI on open source, on pervasively deployable platforms, um, continuing to help people rapidly build and create AI capabilities and fundamentally getting over that hump from concept to profit, right? You know, we titled our talk yesterday from promise to profits with good reason because that's been our own journey around efficiency and internal transformation. And I think that's the that's the step that we're really looking this year to help more and more clients make. Yeah, so Hillary, wow. Um, great conversation. Yep. I appreciate it. 
Something tells me we're going to be seeing each other soon yes. uh, at, a, at an IBM event. Uh, can't wait, but no, seriously, thank you so much for uh, uh, doing this. And, you know, it's our first conversation that's public now here. Yep, right? yep. But I'm so sure first we will be doing many, a, whole, a, lot, yes. a lot of Zoom calls yep. together. But I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks so much. Appreciate thank it. You. This is uh, Pat Moorhead and the IBM the GTC 2025 in San Jose, California. We're talking hybrid cloud AI. It's great. One of my favorite topics. It's the combination of two, actually, AI and hybrid cloud. Great stuff. Tune into all the IBM content we have out there and all of the GTC content we have there as well. Hit that subscribe button and take care.